one thing that I've been thinking about this weekend, actually, something I've kind of come to grips with and sort of come to an acceptance or realization with, especially during this whole lockdown period, has been my rela- my relationship or my attitude towards friendships and relationships. And in terms of just, you know, um, not anything uh, romantic, just in terms of with friends and shit, right? And in general, in my life, I've kind of always struggled with keeping friends and relationships just because I'm a bit of a loner, not because I'm a bad guy. I don't think so. Hopefully not. But I don't count myself to be a bad dude. But usually because I just don't tend to cultivate or keep relationships. I just have a tendency to do that ever, ever, you know, all throughout my primary school, secondary school, college university i just never kept in touch with people even though people would kind of go out their way to sort of make it be known that hey i want to be your friend i would never take it to the next level and i don't know why a lot of it has to do with probably some past trauma that i haven't necessarily come to grips with but it will be a tendency i kind of had seen in myself a lot right over the years and there were times where i try to be introspective and be like i wonder why i do this why do i always push people away why do i always kind of always want to be on my own and a really good example and knowledge of it is that you know i'm I have it I'm well known within my kind of small group of friends of going out on my own a lot right I go to parties I go to raves I travel to different countries like and I do that a lot and I really enjoy it and a lot of people will sometimes look at me a bit like with a side eye, like why would you like to go to these places on your own isn't it better with friends and I would always make the excuse of like oh no I don't want to ask people because you know it's just it takes too long to get things done you know you just you just kind of try and rationalize your own psychopathy and looking back at it now at times I just think I just there's no real explanation behind it I just think I've been doing it for so long I just naturally do enjoy that side of things a lot more than the other side of things maybe it's because of a detachment I kind of want to be left alone I don't know whatever or to get up to some debauchery activities I don't know what it is but regardless I tend to do that quite often I think this lockdown has been one of those times where a lot of people have kind of looked inwards and kind of seen if there's relationships and stuff in their life that they could kind of mend and I kind of went through that a little bit towards the end of the year where I reached out to a couple of people about you know that who I obviously I feel in my heart that I kind of wronged a bit or I didn't necessarily I wasn't necessarily the bestest of friends to them and I went to sort of mend things and then I realized I think over the last few weeks having read some books and just kind of you know reflecting on the year gone by and what's to come in the future it's kind of pointless and the reason why I say this, because I, I generally think like as bad as the situation we're going through now, there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel, right? There's some really good numbers coming out in the UK with the terms of the amount of people that are getting vaccinated. Certain countries in the world are opening up. Australia, New Zealand are doing pretty well. Parts of Southeast Asia have got the virus and under some kind of control, right? And, you know, slowly but surely parts of Europe will end up kind of rolling out the vaccine there are, um, you know, parts of America if you live in Houston, if you live in Texas and sort of places like that, people just don't really care about the virus. But in general, there is some movement in terms of getting the world back to where it was prior. So I do see a better future, whether it's end of this year or the beginning of 2022, we definitely have to end it light in the tunnel. So with that being said, there's definitely an opportunity and a chance for you to meet loads of amazing new people and have some very fresh and real experiences that you probably wouldn't have had without COVID, right? COVID's probably made people a bit more appreciative and also let them maybe be, it probably helps them acknowledge how unappreciative they were of their freedoms and the things that they were able to do prior to COVID. So I think once that's over, people are going to be more willing to have real experiences with humans in real life than they were prior so there's so i think if you go around trying to forgive or not trying to forgive if you go around trying to mend every friendship and relationship that you had prior that just fizzled out for whatever reason you don't allow yourself the room to kind of invite new people in and i'm saying that from my point of view where i've kind of been the worst of kind of friends right i've not really been the best in terms of keeping people around who have been there from early anyway do you know what i mean I, I still take them for granted but i think even in my case it's come in my case more so i feel like it comes across a bit uh it comes across a bit fake when i do reach out to these people and be like hey i want a mentor because i don't really mean it right i'm just doing it because i feel like it's the right thing to do so i'd much rather it just mend if it wants to mend and if it doesn't mend it doesn't mend but then my hypocrisy that i have in me is that even though i have a very 
um, laissez-faire, don't really give a fuck thing attitude towards friends. I'm also very prone to trying really hard to mend something that's quite clearly gone. Like I'll chase, not ch I won't chase, but like I'll keep at people who obviously don't want to be kept at or who possibly feel like you were a friend that they probably had at a specific time of their life and now they've moved on. But I will constantly keep chasing that sort of person in the hopes I can maybe rekindle whatever friendship we had at that time and bring it forward to the present moment. And that note usually always recipe for disaster. And again, it's only friendships. This isn't romantic. If it was romantic, it would be even worse. It would be even way more, um, it would be way more muddied. But it's just, it, it, I tended to do that a lot. And I remember prior, I think it's been helped now because I deleted my Facebook. But when I used to have Facebook, you know, I had like over close to 2000 friends on there. And most of it was because wherever I traveled on my own, I would just pick up loads of random friends, right? From just like asking people, hey, let me add you on Facebook after we kind of had a chat in the flipping toilets, getting up to whatever, whatever you get up to when you're in Berlin, right? In a techno club somewhere. So you just, you know, you're just giddy and, you know, off your face and you just want to add people and make friends. And you come back home, you have all these new friends that have accepted you and you have like, you know, that kind of like, um, you have that kind of uh what's that what's that thing called that honeymoon period of like two weeks where you're exchanging tracks you're talking and then of course you know because you live miles and miles away the relationship kind of pairs up but then you go back again the next year and you try and rekindle it and obviously things have changed i don't know that person might not be into the music anymore they might have moved to another country they might have got a new job i don't know whatever something just changed and you know they're not going to wait for your friendship um it's just not realistic and i'll be like a bit bummed but then I'll try and keep chasing. It just wouldn't work out too much. So there's that two, there's those two sides of my personality, right? Where I don't give a fuck and I try and keep people away as much as possible. And I also end up chasing randoms, like people who I don't even know that well, right? Or even people I do know well who clearly have moved on. It's just an odd part. It's just an odd place to be. So I think during lockdown, one thing I've realized is that it's best just to leave things as they are and where they are if they end up mending themselves fair enough but i think we're all going through whatever we're going through at the moment and this probably isn't the time to try to kind of understand or psychoanalyze people and to try and mend things because i think that requires a lot more time and effort um and it just mostly time for it to heal right you, you know, they always say um time always heals old wounds so if that's the case you're just going to need more time for it to kind of heal because right now people are so sort of preoccupied with making sure we have food on our tables a roof over our heads our friends are okay our family members are safe like we're just trying to make sure our close circle and the things that are near near us are where they should be that all this other stuff about people else people that kind of exist outside of your home just doesn't matter anymore do you know what I mean because we're all sort of quarantined and under some sort of lockdown so the last thing you need to be stressing about is what he or she is getting up to it just doesn't matter at the moment so that's kind of where I'm, I'm at but I'm also thinking that going forward anyway I just would rather have the room open in my sort of like mental friendship hard drive for other people to come in once the world does reopen because I'm sure once the world does reopen there's going to be a, such an opportunity for you to meet some great amazing people that you would have probably never met prior but you need to kind of have gone through this sort of like weird um enforced friendship cleansing right friendless cleansing somewhere like for instance i i did it physically by deleting my facebook because i felt like that was the last or one of the only places that i had that kind of weird tie with every other platform i hardly even use instagram or my twitter in that way i just you know whatever i just do what i do on there and kind of leave post and dump but i felt like my facebook was the last because again i had facebook when i went to uni when it first started right and it was the only platform that i used to kind of connect with my friends that i had in sixth form or before I went to uni and some people that I had in my campus, you know, that kind of thing. So it had a different sort of tie to it. And then when I started traveling to like places in Southeast Asia, Central America, going to parts of Europe, it was a great way to kind of hold, have a kind of a contact list of all these people that you met all over the world as you traveled and shit. But as time goes on, you quite, you realize, you know, sooner rather, you realize as you, as time goes on, sorry, that you didn't even speak to those people in like years. You know what I mean, you've added them in like 20, 
in 2011 you know and now it's, it's it's whatever year it is and you've not spoken to them ever so there's no point of keeping them even in your mental hard drive even if it's just on your facebook it just doesn't make any sense so physically deleting that really helped going a long way but i do think going forward i'm just not going to bother trying to mend any of those relationships or friendships that have sort of like fizzled out i think if they do get mended they will by themselves get mended over time that's the hope but if not I'm also kind of ready and willing, kind of semi-open-armed. I'm still kind of keeping people away because that's just the way I am. I like to kind of do things on my own, but I'm more kind of open to having the possibility to inviting other people into my life when the world reopens because I'm sure that will end up happening. But yeah, that's what I've kind of been thinking. Again, this is all from reading books. So that's why sometimes the whole reading book thing can be great. It can be a great sort of... um, um ex- it can be a great display of mental of kind of intellectual masturbation right showing people oh look look at the books i read i'm a big uh, i've got a big brain but pe- what people don't understand is that when you're reading two or three hours per day sometimes four about you know from some of the best authors in the world some amazing novels non-fiction fiction books and then you just you know it just kind of always makes you your mind wander and when your mind wanders, especially during these times where there's nowhere to your mind to go except for kind of a reminder of the flipping the dread of living in these four walls day in day out it can get a bit weird but introspection is good in it it's good to always sort of like look within and sort of like mend and things before you then step out into the outside world and people don't do that often enough in it people are often too quick to jump outside and try and solve the problems of the world whilst they've got an internal volcano erupting ferociously over you know all the lava is pouring out from every orifice of their flipping body but yet here they are telling people how to do x y and z it's always it's always bizarre to me but you know humans are weird like that but yeah that's been my weekend revelation so what can you do what can you do